All right, so if you watched last week's video where uh, I attempted to just show you all of these cool um, Google Chrome extensions and things that you can add to add functionality to Trello and make it even more amazing than it already is, then you may have noticed that like the first one we came across was one that um, is super, super robust. Also one that uh, we only have a free trial of, but that um, does have a free forever level. So what I wanted to do is kind of dive into some of the features and I won't know for sure um, in all cases which ones are only available at the um, paid level versus the free level. But I wanted to dive a little bit deeper because what we were looking at, it looked really cool, but we just didn't have time to really go into it in that video. So let's look closer. What I'm not going to do is sync with my Google. It looks like you can do that, which is super cool. It looks like you can also maybe add Outlook. Okay, you could also add Outlook. Um, I'm not going to do those because I'm probably not going to end up keeping this. And so I don't want to um, make those kinds of connections. But um, we've got two of these going on so far. Two of these views. I don't really know what they call them. Um, but where we've got my command center on this one. And this one is the Pinterest strategy view. So I'm kind of curious... If we, um, let's, let's get rid of this, oh, they call them a collection. Okay, so we'll get rid of this collection. And in this one, we're going to add a couple of boards. So the boards we're going to add are ones that um, I use to actually track the planning process of certain things that are on the command center. So there might be a little bit of duplication here as far as the cards, but uh, I'm curious to see what it's like seeing them all in one place. Ooh, okay. All right. So let's see. What are our, what are our choices up here? So we've got board. Uh, okay. You know what? Let's make this. Oh, why can't I make this more full screen? Oh, I think I need to open a new tab to see it full screen. Let's see. Yeah, here we go. Okay. So if I just want to see the board, it looks like I can toggle between all the boards that I added to this collection. So that's cool. Um, keeps the labels and all that, but some of the uh, personalization that's done in Trello is not carrying over. So not a huge deal, but we can see that that's not fully carrying over. And then we've got calendar view. Hmm. It's like adding it to that one. But what if I don't... Oh, okay. So we can also turn that into list view. But then what if I... I just don't want... I don't want to see... I remove this board for... No, 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 no. Cancel. Okay, be forewarned. So it looks like... We might be able to, if you hit close board, it would like actually close the Trello board. So be careful. That's not just closing this view. That would literally close your Trello board, which, I mean, you can reopen um, a Trello board as long as it didn't go all the way to close. It will just archive it first. But yeah, just be very, very careful because um, you do not want to do that on accident. So now that we have uh, very narrowly escaped accidentally closing one of the most used boards in my Trello account, um, maybe we can just move that over and get it out of our way a little. I, I'm not sure why. So we can expand and everything, but like I don't want it to just keep showing me all of that. So that's a little annoying, but that's okay. Um, so we've got a calendar view where we're seeing the cards on the calendar for all of the boards that I added here. That is cool. Can we click into them? We can, and we can even see our links, checklists, and all of that good stuff. Wow, okay. Um, that's cool. I do like this a lot. It's a really neat view. Okay, so then timeline. Um, I don't know why this still just doesn't go away. Like, why? Well, okay. I'm just going to, 
I'm just going to not let that bother me, <laughs> but that does kind of bother me. Um, okay, so then we've got this. Ooh, okay, this is a theory I wanted to test. So um, we've got a card here. Let's go ahead with this uh, weekly newsletter one. So as of right now, this has a date of just March 4th. It's just an hour. Okay, but let's see what happens if I drag it, because this is a timeline, which means things can kind of cross over each other. So I've just grabbed it and dragged it across to make it a three-day task. So let's see what it did. Ah, okay, so now the dates have gone March 4th to March 6th. So now let's go back here to my actual board and see, um, oh, look at that. It did update it. That's pretty cool, actually. I'm not going to lie. That's that's pretty useful. Okay, um, but we're going to change that back because that's not true. I only do that on a certain day. Okay, and then we've got time tracking, which this would be really useful if you have um, like an employee or a VA or somebody working for you and you wanted them to be able to like track their time. It sort of looked like we've got this timer button here. I don't know why we don't have it here, but we have this where we could start the timer and we could choose a card, it looks like, of what we're working on. So like, here, this is the, t the YouTube video we're on right now. So let's click on that and hit timer and it's counting while we're recording. So I'm assuming that at the end of this, we'll give it, we'll let it kind of go during the recording and we'll come back to time tracking at the very end. And then we've got reports, which I'm guessing this would need more data because it's looking at tracked time, tracked versus estimate and estimated. And uh, we have not tracked any time yet. Uh, we're doing it for the first time right now. So um, there's nothing to show here. So that makes sense. So now what else can we do? So we've got a filter. Um, here, let's go back to the calendar. We could filter based on the labels and things like that, but we can do that right in Trello. So that's, you know, cool, but we already have that functionality. Share collection. What does this do? Oh, export it to Excel or CSV. That is cool, actually, because natively you cannot export Trello to Excel or CSV. So um, that is pretty cool that it lets you do that. Notification center. Refresh. And then what's this? Oh, vertical view. Or, oh, so if we wanted to see, oh, uh, we were looking at our multiple views, we can change the way they look. Or we could flip them, it looks like. Yep. All right. Well, that's pretty cool. And then before, uh, what's this little three dot give us? Board. Oh, it lets us choose what shows up here. Okay. And let's come back here for a second. Do we have all the same things? Yeah, it looks like we have all the same things. Oh, we can even see that our timer's going. I mean, it, I have to say, like, it's integration back and forth is pretty in sync. Um, and no, I'm not going to start singing bye, bye, bye. But that's what I just thought when I said in sync. But it is. It's very synced up very well um, so that everything you do in one place automatically updates to the other. So that's pretty neat. So let's go ahead and stop our timer. So we worked on this video for, what, two minutes? Um, add a note. Uh, okay. Recorded video content. It's at two minutes and this is the time frame. And I guess it just automatically does it. I don't know. Adding a member open in Trello. What would that do? Oh, 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 that's cool guys. Okay, so I have to say, if you if you work completely by yourself, this is less needed, right? Um, if you do have an employee or a contractor, a VA, somebody that's working with you, 
um, somebody that's working on marketing or something, this would come in super handy because especially if they're charging you uh, like an hourly rate versus a flat rate, having something like this um, really helps you to see and be aware of the time that they're actually spending and where that time is going. And, you know, we'd all love to believe that our contractors are super honest and upfront with us. And I know that most of them are, but I also have heard horror story after horror story of people who have hired someone to, um, take care of something in the tech side of their business, you know, set up their automations or set up even their whole website who have just claimed hours and hours and hours of work for things that, you know, as somebody who does that kind of work, it shouldn't take anywhere near that if you know what you're doing. And these people are ostensibly being hired because they know what they're doing, right? So I think it's one of those better safe than sorry, especially if you're paying them an hourly rate, like I said, because um, this is just a super clear cut kind of way of knowing this is how much time they spent. This is what they got done, according to them. So then you can go check and see if they're actually getting stuff done. So that's pretty freaking cool. If you only work by yourself and you don't have any employees or um, contractors working with you, this could be useful in, in order to for you to um, get a better hold on why certain activities are taking longer in your business than you think. Um, chances are, if you're anything like me, it's because you get sidetracked by like 10 other things while you're supposed to be working on something. But um, it could be really helpful just to kind of be keeping track of your own time for certain things um, so that you can see and get a realistic understanding of how long does it take you typically to write a blog post or how long does it take you to um, write your newsletter and things like that so that you can time block your days a little bit more effectively. Because uh, if we overestimate or underestimate how long it takes us to do certain things, then we might give ourselves a to-do list that is just completely not possible. And then it's frustrating because we feel um, like a failure all the time, right? And that's, nobody wants to feel that way. So I can see a lot of benefit to this, whether you have employees or not. Um, and we're going to check into the reports just real quick since we've actually tracked a little time. And we've got two minutes right here. We didn't do any estimated time, um, but I think had we created an estimate, actually, it looked like we could. Let's see if we estimate. Let's say we estimated an hour. I don't know. That's what it says, so we'll just go with that. And then let's refresh this and see if it's like, hey, it only took me two minutes when I said it was going to take an hour. So, I mean, it's, it's very helpful and it makes me really curious to see, like, was that time tracking available at that lower price level or do you have to go all the way up like a lot higher? And it looks like $4 per user per month and you get the time tracking. You get a lot actually at that point, um, which is uh, pretty cool. So if you do have, I mean, keep in mind, this is not just $4 a month. This is $4 per user a month. And that's if you're paying annually. So I would, you know, be aware if you have a couple of different people working with you, um, that could get a little pricey, but if you are just starting out maybe with like a new VA or somebody and you just are maybe not sure or like uncomfortable, like trusting them with their time and things like that, this could be money super well spent. So keep that in mind. Um, that could be super helpful. And if it's just you and you're just uh, time tracking for your own benefits just to maximize your productivity, then $4 a month, I mean, that's pretty good. That's, that's a pretty darn good price for everything that you're getting for it. Do keep in mind, though, like a lot of the stuff that was in here, um, you can get in Trello already, like the calendar view, not so much the multi board calendar view that you would have to be in on premium for. So you'd be paying one way or the other. It might be cheaper for you to get that this way, um, versus going premium in Trello, but 
but yeah, this is, I think this is pretty cool guys. Um, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Um, what do you think of this? Do you think that this is like cool? Do you think this is just not necessary? It's way overkill too much. Uh, I'm curious, or do you use it or something like this already? Um, cause I'm sure there are plenty of other options for this same type of thing. So if you're using something else, let us know what it is. And uh, if you like this video, please make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so that I can keep making more content just like this. The online tools for your business do not need to be complicated or overwhelming. It's time to let it be easy.